Is it possible to attain a siddha pranat or to attain um, cognizance or awareness of one's siddha deya without siddha pranali, which is a very popular system in the modern world where uh, one goes to the guru and he takes initiation, his diksha mantras, Gopal mantra, Kam Gayatri. Then after one year or so, or according to the Guru Dave's, Guru's decision or assessment of that disciple, then he may be awarded that. Usually it's not before one year that one gets pranali. Uh, because the Guru wants to understand the nature and like this. And there should be some waiting period and like that. So it's not an instant thing. You walk in the door with your ATM card and walk out with the money, which is the propaganda that's spread around outside world. That oh, those Radhakun Babaji's, they just you walk in, you, know, you drive in and drive out. You know, <laughs> like in uh, Europe and America, they have drive-in banks. You know, with a car you can drive in. You know, take the money. I guess they have. I don't. They have in America. <laughs> just drive in. It's like ATM. So uh, that that is one way to receive the Siddhadeya. And that has become, that was started, the guru, the, 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 the concept or the idea of Siddha Pranali Diksha is not written about or described by the six Goswamis 500 years ago. But the practice, the practice and the principle of the guru revealing the spiritual identity, the Siddha of the disciple. You can record this if you want. I don't want to. <laughs> Not that private part. I want to go. Any rate, Radisha, the um, the uh, guru, the principle the guru revealing in Siddhadeya was done by the six Goswamis and it's written about in Bhakti Sandarva by Jiva Goswami. He says at the time of Diksha, the guru gives vishesh gyan. He gives special knowledge about the identity. So the verses there in Sandarbhas describing the diksha function. And there, the door is open. Yeah. Let's open that other door. Okay, more too. This one more. This door more. And turn that light on. Here, this side. Uh, yeah, no. Another one. Yeah, okay. So, the, the example is in Prem Vilas by Nityananda Das that Gopal Bhatta Goswami, this is very famous, one of the six Goswamis, he gave Siddha Pranali, not, well, what we call Siddha Pranali, but he revealed, he gave all the revelation of the spiritual form to Srinivas Acharya. Srinivas Acharya wrote the bhajan Six Goswami Astakam that we have in our songbook. Krishna Kirtana Gana Nartana Pro, you know, Bande Rupa. That's Sri Nivas Acharya. And his sitting place, what they call Baitak, Baitak means sit. His sitting place and place of bhajan is in Radhakund, down the street from Gopal Mandir, where there's Radhasham Sundar Mandir, then there's the old Prani Radhadamadar temple. Then on the right is a big guest house, it belongs to Manipur. Gopal Manipur Temple, Shugadev, you know, the Iskand type of place. That's their guest house. And then there, there's the uh, sitting place of Srinivas Acharya. So he gave, he said, your name is Mani Manjri, and your service is like this. So even for 500 years in the Gaudiya tradition, we have the idea that the Guru will reveal the spiritual identity, what we call the Siddhadeya. And technically in Rupa Goswami's book, he says, the Siddha Sarup. Siddha Sarup means my perfect form. That's told in Nectar Devotion. We call Nectar Devotion. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And he describes that we have to serve in that. Ah, yeah. As part of our sadhana, we have to serve in that spiritual body. Because he's describing sadhana bhakti. He says sadhana bhakti has two aspects. Vaidhi sadhana and Raghunuga sadhana. Okay? And after sadhana bhakti, then there's bhava, and then prema. So in the sadhana bhakti chapters of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, it says, Seva, seva sadaka rupena siddha rupena chatrihi. That one will render service externally in his sadaka 
Rup, his male-female form as an initiated devotee here now. And he'll in his and then he'll do seva in his siddha sarup. Siddha sarup or siddha deya. Chaitanya Charitamrita describes it as Siddha Deya. Lord Chaitanya tells Ragnar Das, he told Ragnar Das, uh, you should, day and night you should serve Radha Krishna in your Siddha Deya. It's an Antya Leela. But it doesn't describe how, who gave him the Siddha Deya or how he got it or there's any process. You know, uh, Siddha Pranali. Pranali means a channel. The word Pranali means a channel like a a nali, a, a canal, you know, a channel. You know, like you have, a, you have a big river and you make a channel to bring water into some fields or something, a ch- you know, a channel. Man-made things. So that's a pranali. means a channel. It's a line of, of perfection, that, of this idea, this process. So that's not mentioned, that term is not mentioned in goes so many books, Siddha Pranali Diksha. But the idea of Siddha is... All over this, all over Chaitanya Charitamrita, and meditating on it, and it says one should think of one's, one should meditate on one's mentally conceived siddhadeya, and in that, in that siddhadeya, render service to Radha and Krishna throughout the day and night. That's Chaitanya Charitamrita. So there's plenty of statements about siddhadeya, and then, then that's like 500 years ago. And of course, all the six Goswamis were Mandris. But then we have 150 years ago, or say 1900s, yeah, 125 years ago, we have Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And he, he, of course, writes about his Siddha Pranali, everything from a, he got from a guru. Vipna Vihari Goswami. So our own <laughs> Niskans. One of their acharyas, there on their altar everywhere. There's <laughs> on the altar of every Iskon temple. There's three Babaji's in the parampara: Goraki Shordas Babaji, Jagnat Das Babaji, and Bhakti Thakur. <laughs> and then, uh, then there's two sannyasis: Bhakti Sanatana Saraswati, then Prabhupada. So we have three Babaji's are being worshipped and honored and like that. So they all took their siddhadeya they received from Aiguru. So that's one way. And now the other way is that one can attain a siddhadeya at death. That's in the Bhagavatam. In the first canto of Bhagavatam, the story of Narada Muni, he received siddhadeya at death. And he, he was not in Mandri Bhav. He was just a, a devotee, and he had perfected his vaiti sadhana. He, had protect, he perfected his vaiti sadhana, in chapter, first canto Bhagavatam, chapter six, verse twenty nine, it describes it in twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine. He had developed, he had done his bhajan and advanced in bhakti, and he came to the level of bhava. And he was having trembling and symptoms, and then he was always meditating on the forum, form of Paramatma, Krishna, Narayan. Then he had darshan one time. He saw it, and he fainted. Then Narayan spoke to him. It's all in the Bhagavatam. This kind of first count of Bhagavatam. Then Narayan spoke a voice, Akashvani, but Narayan. He said, you will not see me again. I will not give you a second darshan. But uh, you will come to me in the end. This is a very, very encouraging story. Especially for members of Iskan. And, a very, and the whole, this is the very first count of Bhagavatam. And it's describing, of course, the whole Bhagavatam is going to describe the perfection of, of love is Radharani and the perfection of, of a loving spiritual realm is Vrindavan and the greatest lovers of Krishna are the Brijabhasis, Nanda Bhava and Yashoda and Balaram and Subal and Sridam and Raktak and Patrak and all these servants that are described in 10th Canto. So that that's that's where it's going. But to get there, you get to Radha and Krishna's leelas and Nitya Vrindavan, you need a Siddhadeya. And the Siddhadeya is described in the first canto. And and, and he, he didn't go to a guru and get a piece of paper with his name and his age and his skin color and his seva and his sobhav and his ornaments and his place of 
residence and then it's Seva Kunj and all these things. And his Yuteshvari <laughs> written on a piece of paper. He didn't receive all that, although that, that's a very good thing also. A very wonderful thing, to, a great gift to have. It's described in the Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam describes there, 1.629, that when he left his body, Narayan came, says, Prayuj, Prayujamane, because all the Siddhadeyas are in the spiritual world. They're not inside our heart. They're not inside our mind. They're not inside the piece of paper. <laughs> They're in the spiritual world eternally. And I, I'm eternally there, and I'm eternally here. There's no beginning to my time here, but I can end my time here. When I, kind of like this me joins that me, and I go on being me forever. Very achintya, inconceivable. So, it says Narayan, Prayujamani, the word Prayujamani means he brought from there. He brought the spiritual body, and then it, des- then it described Narada Muni, because Narada Muni is describing his own life story, because someone asked him. That's how yesterday they asked Narada Muni. So he said, then I gave up my Panchabotika body, body, body that's made of five elements. Uh, Panchabhuta means earth, water, fire, air, ether. Five L. I, I simultaneously got that and received my Siddhadeya as just like when you have when you're making a garland, a flower petal garland. You know, you ever make? How long does it take the needle to go through one petal and the next petal? <laughs> it goes through. You have fifty petals at the same time. And you pull, pull them down. He said, I instantly gave up my material body and I instantly got my spiritual body. So he went straight to Vaikuntha and he became a Narayan Parshad. He became an eternal associate. He became an asso- eternal associate of Lord Narayan and Dasya Bhav. Because that's his Stairati. And he retained that spiritual body in, in Dasya Rati to serve Narayan by playing his veena and singing Narayana, Narayana, Narayana. Or as... Bhakti Nava Thakur writes in his songbook, Narada Muni Bhajana Veena Radhika Ramana Name. There's a song like that, Bhakti Nava Thakur. <laughs> in his idea, uh, and it's possible, Narada Muni is his Veena, Narada Muni Bhajana Veena Radhika, Radhika Name. His Veena is, is playing and vibrating the name of Radhika Raman. <laughs> Should be Ryan. But he also... In the Narada Pancharatra, in the teachings of Narada Muni, he also has a thousand names of Radha. So he knows about Radha. And in Padma Puran, there's one chapter that describes how Narada Muni became a gopi. That he did tapasya in Nardavan. Nardavan is just down opposite Kusan Sarovar. You must have seen it's one of the famous uh, Leela Stalis of Rajmandal. It's right here in Govardhan. Go down to Kusan Sarovar, you go past Kusan Sarovar on the left hand side. Back about half half a mile or so is the, the, the Kund and the temple and Narada Muni and all that. So he did tapasya there. Then the Yoga Maya Vrindadevi took him in Kusum Sarovara and he bathed there and he became a gopi. So you go to Kusum Sarovara and take a bath and maybe you come up, you'll be a gopi. <laughs> so that's Krishna. One will get Siddhadeya, he can get Siddhadeya from Guru by a Pranali process, which has become very, very popular over the last 150 or 200 years. But before that, I mean, it's actually been made into a system with a piece of paper. And Srinivas Acharya, I mean, he didn't receive any paper from Gopal Bhatta Goswami. It's a very confidential, I mean, whisper in the air type of thing. You know, it's like, just like when you take Diksha, it's not. Although nowadays people, these big gurus, they, you know, they are, okay, whatever, who wants, there's 50,000 people in the audience and the people stand up, who wants, to, who wants the Saraswati mantra? Who wants to, who wants to worship Saraswati? What students out there? And the guy is a famous Indian guru without mentioning any names, he or she. And they say, oh, I want to worship. Okay, listen, I'll now initiate you in Saraswati mantra. I am your guru. I will give you Saraswati mantra. So all these 10,000, 5,000 students raise their hand. Aim, Aim, A I M, Aim. That's the Bija mantra for Saraswati, Aim. <laughs> so then, um, so now, then they, so this is not exactly how it's supposed to be done. It's privately, it's called Gopia. Gopia means 
Diksha is Sugopya, very private and secret in the air, one on one. And that's you must have know you have your initiation. So the uh, there was this conveying or telling the disciple of his Siddhartha was done in a very private way and in a, uh, very rarely and, and not so public. Now everything's so much high tech and massive information everywhere that, uh, you know, it's become very po- almost like a mass movement. <laughs> Siddha Pranali was a mass movement. Hundreds and hundreds of people lining up and getting Siddha Pranali. At least it seems like that. I don't think it really is. Very, very rare people are interested in these things, actually, to be honest. But uh, even over 500 years, it was done. The guru would reveal, maybe not without a, so official with a piece of paper. It's called a Diksha Patra. And uh, there's stories where in Obi Al Kapoor's book where some boy went to the guru and said, Oh, I, I want to uh, get training. He said, Where's your Diksha Patra? I want to see your initiation line. You know, your, your, where's your where's your marriage certificate? <laughs> like a mar- How do I know you're married? Well, here's our certificate from the government. So here's a proof. You know, legal, legal document. 